All right, so we all know um, about the masks, and I don't know about you, but I always have like a mask in my purse and one in my car, um, but they often get kind of gross or wrinkled or, you know, things get on them or, you know, having to take them on and off can be a real pain. So my version of a mask chain, mask chain, <laughs> is to use Kumihimo, um, a, a beautiful Japanese braiding art um, to make a, a chain to use to um, kind of a lanyard, I guess, to hold the, um, the mask around my neck um, when I have it off. So then I can take it on and off. Um, so this um, has the, the woven part here. Um, and it's fairly soft because I'm gonna, I use a silky cord here. A little bit elastic, but not too much. Um, I mean, there's no actual elastic in it. It's just the el elasticity of the weave and the cords. Um, and this one, it has um, two clasps at the end. So that'll hook onto um, the ear loops of any mask. And then you can um, put it on and off any mask. And if you um, make a collection of them, then you can have matching ones with different um, masks. Um, okay, so for what you're gonna need for this, um, the um, main kind of Kumihimo thing is the Kumihimo foam disc. Um, well, I mean, modern one is the foam disc. Traditionally, they have, you know, more of a wooden wheel. But your foam disc is available on Amazon or at, um, usually at a Joanne or Michaels Fafts craft store. Fafts. Um, and, yes, this one I wrote my name on. But um, uh, this is the basic, um, the basic idea. There's going to be a bunch of different notches. Um, all along the way and we're gonna use that um, the at the end you're gonna need um, something to secure the ends the easiest one is to get a couple of glue in um, end clasps and um, and then your basic clasps those are also should be available at kind of any craft store um, any any large craft store should have um, or a jewelry making beading type store. Um, you're also going to need um, some cord. Um, easiest one and what I'm easy one to start with and what I'm using for this is what they they kind of call silky cord or rat tail. Um, this they called cotton cords, but you know looks a little shiny. Um, and yeah, this one comes with four different colors, um, and there's you know, so um, so I'm gonna use blue and white uh, for some nice contrast when I show uh, show you how the weaving goes. Um, weaving, braiding, I'll call it both. Um, another tool that's really useful, um, it's not totally essential, but very, very useful. I would say worth buying if you're thinking about doing any more than one of these, um, is the Kumihimo bobbin. Um, so there are these great pieces of plastic that basically um, will pop open and will hold your cord while you're in, in the middle of weaving. So um, let me get started and show you how um, we're going to wrap a bobbin. All right, so the general advice for Kumihimo, um, and like the basket weave that I'm going to show you, is that you want, um, you're going to need eight cords. And for each of those eight cords, you want it to be three times the length of your um, project. So whatever bracelet, necklace, or wire chain you're gonna make, you wanna make it three times that long. So you can obviously just use a ruler. My preferred method though, is to take a piece of jewelry that you wanna copy. Um, like I like the length of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hold my cord against the end and measure it um, just that way, all right? And so then I have one length there, and I fold it in half, I've got two, um, right? And then if I just do it one more time, now I've got a triple layer of cord. Um, it's a little bit twisted, but I can untwist it before I um, do the next step. So I'm gonna snip it there, 
Um, and put this off to the side. So, um, so I'm gonna need four lengths like this, and I'm going to need four lengths of white. Um, so I'm just gonna use that one as a measuring stick to measure the second blue cord against. Um, and then got some extra blue here. Um, that I'll put off to the side. Um, okay. So, um, to show you how the bobbin works, um, these are great Kumihimu bobbins. Um, they, um, they just pop open conveniently and they work really well for just holding your cord together and keeping the, the various eight cords from getting knotted together. So, um, you want to, uh, I'm right-handed, so all my instructions will be that way, right? So I put this in my left hand. I keep, um, I do put like an inch or so of the cord, um, through and just hold it there with my left thumb. And then against the, the curved part, I just start wrapping, um, the rest of the cord and, um, and then the curve just helps it nicely, um, go into the bobbin and um, yeah. And then I just wrap, 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 leave about a couple inches out at the end um, and then you're done, okay? And I'm gonna take another one and um, do the same thing here. I leave about an inch there um, just to get a good grip on it and, um, and then I wrap, wrap, wrap. Um, you may notice some of these are clear, some are translucent. Uh, they're just from, I think I've brought them from a couple different places. They both function the same. Um, leave a few inches here and voila. All right, so now I have my eight bobbins all with the um, threads fully threaded. Um, okay, so this uh, start looks fairly ungraceful. There are other ways, but this is the easy way um, and straightforward for anybody who, um, you know, doesn't wanna get fancy. Basically, we are gonna take all of these threads and you can see now it's how easy it is just to pull out a little more thread, right? So I'm gonna need a few inches. I'm just gonna gather all of these and uh, make a knot. <laughs> um, a single, uh, just a simple overhand, nothing fancy, get all of the threads to stay together, uh, knot. Okay. So you will need enough uh, give in your bobbins just um, so that you have space because uh, it'll be kind of a big knot because these fab these uh, cords are a couple mi millimeters thick each. So um, yeah, make a, make a big loop, pass them through, and um, voila. You want um, you don't need a lot of extra space afterwards, but you're gonna need at least you know an inch or so just to grab it and um, you know make sure that you have it fully knotted. You wanna give it a good pull, make sure the knot is firm, and then we're ready to get started. Uh, one piece of equipment that I didn't mention, um, but exists if you are gonna do a lot of this or um, want more accessories, there's a thing called Kumihima weight, which will help, uh, can help uh, you with tension as you, as you um, braid the cord. Um, I don't have one. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it without the Kumihimo, um, weight. Um, but there is kind of an extra step in my procedure, which you wouldn't need if you had that. So, but basically you can achieve kind of a similar effect by just pulling on the cord occasionally, but you know, it's not quite as graceful. Okay. So basically, uh, the structure of the disc, right, is that I'm going to put the knot through here. And as I, as I braid, 
the um, braid's gonna come out the back. So I'm placing the knot here in the center. I'm gonna kind of um, place my left hand underneath here and um, and I'm going to set up these cords. Um, I can, uh, I'll put a, try and put a link in for some other ways, um, other uh, patterns to, that you can do with different um, color combinations. But for our purposes here, just for um, ease of, of making, making a cool thing, um, I'm gonna use just alternating colors. Um, and I'm gonna have each color alter, um, kind of straddling this dot. In terms of Kumihimo lingo, the, um, the north dot is gonna be away from you, south is towards you, and um, east and west, obviously, coordinatingly. So, um, Okay, so, oops, you can see I already made a mistake here. I wanted these alternating. Um, this one is not really alternating. Um, so I go like this. Um, your first couple weaves may not look great if you've just knotted it like this. Um, and you know, I just chose any cord, so your first weave you know, your first couple millimeters might not look perfect, but um, I'm just gonna keep going here to show you that it, it will all work out. Okay, so we have white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, right? So the basic idea is that we're gonna do, we're gonna do two circles, clockwise and counterclockwise. And the first one, clockwise, we're gonna, jump, take the first color, white, and we jump the blue one, put it next to the white, sec, the next white one. Then we take the middle white one, jump the blue, put it next to the next white one. And we're gonna proceed to kind of jump the neighbor of the white ones until we get to the last one where we jump this last blue, put it next to the, um, that blue and then and now that's completed our clockwise circle now it's time for the clockwise circle where you guessed it we're gonna take the blue and go counterclockwise right so we take the blue jump the the white and we put it um, on that side of the other blue right and then we take the middle blue and we jump this white and we put it here and now we take the middle blue on this one, and we jump the white neighbor, and we go next to this blue. And now again, we take the middle blue, and um, we jump the white and put it here. And now we've completed one cycle, okay? So that's the pattern that we're gonna repeat. You can see now that it's no longer beautifully straddling. Um, I'll just show you some techniques for uh, fixing that on the go later, but for, right, for the first few, it's probably wise to just kind of reset yourself a little bit. Um, and after one go around, you won't really see the braid forming yet. Um, so um, don't worry if it doesn't look great yet, okay? But now I'm back to kind of my starting position, right? And I'm going to, again, take the white thread uh, cord, jump the blue, take the white, jump the blue, take the middle white, all right, jump the blue, take the middle white, and jump the blue, okay? Um, and now I take the blue, go counterclockwise, jump the white, and keep the blue on this side. Now I'm taking the middle blue, again, counterclockwise, jumping the white down to here. And I take the blue from the middle, go to the east, and here we are. Now I take the last blue uh, from the middle, jump all the way to the north. 
okay? So, um, so you can start to see a little more of the braid forming um, over the knot. And again, just since it's a fresh braid, I'm gonna reset so these pairs of uh, cords are straddling um, the dots, okay? So let's do one more. So, so we did, so we did clockwise and then counterclockwise. Now I'm going to do clockwise again with the white. So clockwise, jump the blue, and there. Then we take the middle white, jump the blue, down to here, and we take the middle white, clockwise over to here, and we take the middle white, jump the blue. All the way up here okay now we've done our clockwise circle you can see the um, the basket weave starting to form here I'm gonna give the knot a little pull just a bit and then I'm going to take the blue um, take it counterclockwise right here and I take the middle blue counterclockwise over here middle blue counterclockwise over to here middle blue counterclockwise up to here okay and now i really have more of a of a weave forming um that looks cooler and more of a pattern um and this is where you are going to want to kind of pull down um if you're not using a kumihimo weight kind of give it a pull i would say every kind of two circles like clockwise counterclockwise give it a little pull just so you um our um your weave is has the correct tension going um all right so hopefully you've kind of got it now you can keep going um i'm gonna go a little bit faster and start to give the uh, tips and tricks section, right? So, um, so you want to keep up this co uh, clockwise, counterclockwise maneuver, um, and um, if you have to stop for any reason, it's always easiest to stop with um, three chords in one place. Because then if you stop with three chords in one place, you can always decipher what was my next move supposed to be. So if you have to go get the door, go to the bathroom, get a phone call, whatever it is, um, you if you just make like part of the next move and leave the disc with three in one place. Now if I leave and I come back to it, right, I can see, oh, well, the three, uh, three chords are here. The double chord is a white. So clearly I was going clockwise doing my, and I was jumping the white chords. And so my next move would be then to move the middle white all the way to the end, right? And you can see, um, similarly for my next, I'm gonna go counterclockwise, do the blue, jump the white. Um, I'm going, if I were to stop here, I can say, oh, well, the three, I have three over here, so clearly I stopped here. Um, but the two chords are blue, so clearly I was going in the counterclockwise direction. Um, and then it's easy to continue without um, having to do a big procedure of figuring out where you left off um, or anything like that. Okay. And now again, you can start to see this, um, this knot is kind of, it's kind of parallel now right and I want it to be growing downwards so if I give it a little pull it'll um, it'll grow downwards and again if you wanted to spend the extra um, money on a kumihimo weight you you don't have to do that part um, it also works a little better if you're not working directly over a table as I am um, I'm doing it I usually just have it over my lap while I'm watching TV or something but um, if you are um, um, yeah, and that way the knot and the bobbins will kind of hang and you can get a much easier rhythm kind of going. Plus you get the nice little sound of the of the bobbins. They sound a little like rain. 
in my opinion. Anyway, um, and so um, now this time, unfortunately, I didn't stop with the three on one side, but it's to your benefit because now I can show you um, how to figure it out if you didn't forget, uh, if you forgot that part. Um, you can take a look here and see which thread's on top, right? So I can see just without, I don't have to go examine the whole braid, just right on top, um, I can see every blue is on top of every white. That means that my last maneuver would have been putting blue on top of the whites. And that means that my next maneuver is going to be having the, the white cord jump the blue neighbor and go back clockwise this way, okay? Um, so my last um, kind of suggestive hint way to, is kind of a way to speed up your procedure. Um, you notice that as you're doing this, you kind of start to get this spread of, of, of the threads. Again, I'm gonna give a little pull here. So my thread goes, um, so you start to get this spread. Um, when you're first starting, I would, I would say definitely your first, you know, few inches of thread. I would just maybe bring these closer together, um, every, every loop, every loop or two. Um, but as you start to get better, your fingers get a little more dexterous. Um, you can kind of do two things at once. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate what I mean here. Um, first of all, um... As long as you keep the or cords in the relative order, it should be okay. But you kind of, if you, but you kind of start to get things stretched out of whack if you have um, uh, things kind of too par far apart. So anyway, so I'm gonna take my white cord. I'm gonna move it over. But at the same time, as I do this jump, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna know ahead of time that my next move is going to be making this uh, southern white uh, cord go further to the south, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and move both of these wires, <laughs> sorry, both of these cords simultaneously. So let me reset this here, okay. So this was here, okay. So I'm gonna take my north white cord and then I'm gonna take my east white cord and I know that that's going to the south next. So I take this northern cord and put it to the east in the closest place to the dot. That's kind of the origin east place, right? Because um, that's where we always reset those white cords to, right? So, so now I have this next cord and at the same time, um, I pull up the next cord and I can already be getting the next white cord at the same time as I place the previous white cord. Um, and now I switch to my other hand. I've got this white cord and I'm pulling that up at the same time that I'm, so I'm placing this next white cord at the same time as I'm already pivoting the next white cord. Okay. So I'll do show it again the other way. I'm bringing my Northern um, blue cord to the west and I um, and I'm taking the middle blue cord what will be the middle blue cord out of the spot at the same time so that I can place the north what was the northern blue card cord sorry and go to the next space and I can take the next blue one and so then I have kind of this floating blue one. And this is not the place you wanna stop. If you stop here, you kind of mess yourself up a little bit, right? But I'm gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna place this in the kind of the good starting spot. And then I finish this cycle, okay? So now, and then I'm gonna give a little tug to this because it's starting to grow upwards and I want it to grow downwards. So, um, so now you can see that even though I've two, done two cycles, um, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise, um, now I have the cord straddling the, the dots again. Um, and that was without 
um, a separate maneuver to recenter the chords. Okay, and so now then for the next chord, uh, for the next one, I can just just do it the fast way without having to, you know, use extra um, caution to place those chords. Okay, so the next one, they'll be um, spread a little further apart. Okay, and then I'm going to tug a little on the chord. And now I have these things um, spread wide from the dots again. So I'll um, do the demonstration here. And I'm going to take the northern white chord. And I'm going to um, put it to the east. Take what will be the middle white chord. Lift it up at the same time as I'm placing the previous white chord. So this white chord, I'm lifting it up and placing the previous one. This one, I'm chord up, place the previous one. Okay, so now I've done the clockwise with the whites, and we're already kind of closer together. So I'll we'll take the blue ones, blue counterclockwise. I'm gonna do the next blue counterclockwise, and I'm gonna do the next blue place that where I want it to be. And then the next blue, lift it up at the same time as I place that one. And you can see this is starting to pop up, right? And that's what I don't want. So I give my tug, which again is because I don't want to pay for a kumihimo weight. So, yeah. And then you can see now this is what I've got so far, um, which is good. And, um, you may go slow at first, but um, you will speed up as you get more practiced. And um, going slow and getting it right is better than, you know, going fast and messing up and having not something cool. Um, all right, so let's assume at this point you finished making your Kumihimo chord. Um, I finished making mine. Um, you can see I actually have, um, not sure if this is just me or if everybody, uh, comes out this long, but if you recall, I um, I measured with this and I did uh, t three times the length of this initial chord. I actually um, finish up with close to twice the length of that chord. So um, I have plenty of room to spare or I can make two chords, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Um, so if you're, um, um, maybe other people just leave extra length at the end. I'm not sure, but in any case, for our purposes, I thought I'd let you know, uh, let this be your caveat that I am not a professional. I do this for fun. So anyway, um, okay. So let's say, uh, for argument's sake that you've reached the end. This is how, um, I would say the easy way to finish off your uh, thread. To begin with, just to get it off um, the disc. Um, so I've, you know, finished every, I've gotten it short enough that it doesn't really go on the bobbin anymore, just to use up most of the cord. But you are gonna need a few inches, say six or eight inches of cord at the end, um, just to be able to give it a good knot. So for the, um, um, just for the interim, I am going to just carefully uh, hold the hold the um, lanyard at the end, so keeping all of the the weaving that I've already done in place, and then just doing a simple um, knot at the end, um, same as I did at the beginning. Just your simple overhand, getting all of the threads through the hole, and keeping it all together which, okay, um, so if you don't, um, because it'll start to kind of unravel pretty quickly if you just leave it loose. So, now I've got a hefty knot at both ends, right? So, um, our goal here is to, um, get it... Maybe I'll edit this part out to show you that I can actually use a Ziploc bag. Um, 
So our goal here is to, we're gonna kind of trim the, um, get this in place so that we can glue on uh, a glue end, uh, glue in cord um, end cap. This is uh, a finding that you can find for purchase anywhere. Well, any jewelry making a stop, I should say. Um, so, yeah, so our goal is to get it so that, um, you know, obviously get rid of these nasty knots, put on a clasp, uh, put on a glue end, and we can put a little clasp there so that you can clasp it onto your mask, okay? But obviously, uh, you can't just go straight from cutting this to sticking it in there. That, um, even if you're super speedy fast, that just won't work. Um, there's a binding process that I'm gonna demonstrate here that works. Um, when, um, when, when I do it for real or when you do it for real, you're gonna want just like a normal thread. Uh, I usually just use like a cotton thread that you would use for, you know, sewing on a button. Uh, you can use like a jewelry making thread. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use the same uh, cord I've been using to, um, for the, for the lanyard, but um, just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. So you're gonna want a fairly longish piece of thread, uh, maybe 18 inches or so. Um, and again, this is just going to be our intermediate step to bind it while we, um, before we can stick it in the uh, glue end, okay? Um, so you make a little loop here. Let's see if my hands are in the picture, yes. So make a little loop here. Um, um, I want, so I want a long piece of thread on one end and then a shorter piece here. And then I put that uh, wherever I'm trying to, you know, bind this. Um, and then I take the long piece of cord and I wrap it around. And I leave this cord, uh, the loop, loose at the end and I want that uh, short piece of thread at this end. And I'm just gonna wrap this all the way around until you run out of thread, okay? And then you take your short end here and you loop it through, you thread it through the loop, I should say, and then you can pull. Um, and that was not very graceful, but um, you pull both ends of the thread and you end up with this um, nice little knot here. Obviously it looks very thick here because I've used the, the millimeters wide Kumihimo thread, but um, when I use my regular uh, cotton thread or if you use your jewelry making thread, it's gonna be thin enough um, that um, it's gonna be useful. So this just keep will keep all of the um, cords together for the intermediate step before you uh, put it in the in the clasp, okay. So, um, and also in terms of which uh, thread you use, I'm gonna just undo that. Um, in terms of which thread you use, um, I've got a yellow one here. It does not have to be matching because this thread is going to be completely um, covered by our clasp, okay. So I will show you the real thing now. It won't be as clear because it's a very skinny thread. Um, um, okay. So I've got, oh, that's a little too short. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys with a thread piece um, of thread. I'm gonna put these off to the side so I don't lose them. Um, So I'm going to use red here, so it'll contrast a little more for you guys to see. And again, this is just your basic, you know, all-purpose cotton thread. Um, I do uh, quilting, so I just have that line around. Okay, so I'm going to make my little loop here. Um, I'm going to try and do this kind of near the end of the knot. Um, I am going to have to leave, you do have to leave enough space so that your scissors can get between the binding and the knot. Um, okay, so 
don't worry about getting it too close because you don't in fact want it to be too close. You need to be able to get your scissors through there to make a nice clean cut, okay? So I've got my short end here, I've got the loop here. I'm gonna take the long uh, thread. I'm gonna use, uh, just kind of hold it there and take the thread and go round and round and round. You want to, um, I didn't show this as clearly, you want to kind of keep this narrow um, because you're trying to really bind it. And also, uh, like I said, this is the piece that's going to go um, in the cord, the glue in cord, so um, cord end. So it needs to be narrow because that's, because um, uh, the clasps are not that long. Okay, so I've got that mostly around. So I take the shorter end here and I tuck it through my loop. Um, and again, there are several different ways to do this. Um, this was just the one. It's fairly straightforward and, um, you know, I'll, I'll attach the, the book where I learned this so you guys can see it. Um, okay, and then I can just give it an easy pull. Um, and then it just kind of, it stays nicely without having to, um, without having to worry about doing it. A complicated knot here okay and then you, you I can just clip those these extra ends okay because I'm I don't need this to stay for very long like I said you're just gonna keep this for kind of a couple minutes um, and kind of in, as an intermediate step okay so um, get my big old scissors um, and I'm just gonna clip these ends here um, and then our next step is going to, uh, go ahead and be the, you know, gluing. I'm going to stick a little piece of scratch paper under here, just in case I have a gluing accident. Um, I've got your classic E6000 super glue here, you know, available pretty much anywhere, used for all, any and all crafts, crafts. Um, I've got my party toothpicks that are handy um, for, um, to help get the glue where I want it to go and not anywhere else, okay? Uh, so I've got a little tube here, but uh, with a toothpick, uh, you can use you know a bigger tube or other kinds of glue. But like I said, your E6000 is your classic, um, classic used everywhere um, glue. So, um, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'm gonna get a little uh, glob of glue and I'm going to uh, take my toothpick and glue and uh, spread the glue around the insides of a clasp and a little bit at the bottom, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put a little glue at the, extra glue at the end. Um, so I will then have glue around the inside of clasp and on the end of the lanyard and um, and then kind of give it a, twist and push as it goes in so the glue will uh, adhere everywhere, okay? So, um, as I, as I, uh, this will roll around, so you may want to um, put it on its end so it doesn't roll. Um, okay, so I'm gonna cut here and you want to slice, try and give it, use some sharp shears so that you can try and do as much in one um, cut as you can because you don't want to be kind of sawing away at these cords. And you just want to give them a snip and you hopefully everything is all in one there. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to open up my craft glue. Um, and just the paper in case, like I said, there's a gluing incident that I don't get it on my nice surface. Um, all right. So I'm spreading my glue around inside, right? I'm gonna, like I said, dab a little glue here on the other end too. Um, personally, I'm not gonna get too squeamish about getting this on my fingers because I'm gonna use my fingers a little bit just to help 
make sure everything goes in. And like I said, I'm going to give this a little turn as I push it down. Um, it's advice I got so that the glue will kind of uh, soak into the cords. Um, then, and then you can wipe off any excess. And then you're going to leave it. Because if you try and pull it off right now, it will pull off. But if you leave it to dry, it will um, it will adhere and um, it will do what we want it to do. Okay. Um, um, the next step does require a little bit of jewelry making skill or um, just having knowledge to have the right, uh, purchase the right findings. Um, so I just got the cord ends and the clasps, but you can see these are both, um, these are both closed loops. So you're going to need what's called a jump ring, um, to, uh, link them together. Um, but that's something easy to obtain. And again, um, often comes with the, um, with the clasps, um, or can be, you know, cheaply purchased as an extra. Um, and any, again, any jewelry making store, anywhere you buy the clasps, they would also have those. Uh, you just want to make sure when you're buying the thing is uh, that the pieces you have are going to connect the way you want. Um, also, in, for the mask chain, I'm using two clasps. Um, generally, for a necklace, you're only going to have one. So if you're buying some sort of kit, um, you're, you need to realize that you're going to be getting, you won't be getting two clasps, lobster clasps, most likely. Um, so, um, okay. So I'm going to let those dry before I start, um, doing any maneuvering with the clasps because, um, you can easily pull things loose if everything's not dried all correctly. All right. Um, so I'm not going to get into the jump rings too much. Uh, suffice it to say, there is a right way and a wrong way. You want to, um, you know, pliers are kind of necessary to get a good grip on it. You can kind of do it with your fingers, but it's really hard. Um, maybe you can find a local bead store that will let you, show you how to do it. Um, and borrow the, the tools. Uh, so just uh, zoom in here on the jump rings. You, right way and a wrong way, right? The correct way is that you want to pry it open that away and not kind of pull it apart because um, then you can't close it properly if you do that. So this way, you just want to separate it like that and then, um, you know, thread the two things you need to connect through their little holes um, and then do the reverse procedure of closing it that away. And you want to have it a tight connection, which if you have a good jump ring, shouldn't be too hard. And um, now I'm done. So like and subscribe. Hope this was helpful. Um, hope you have some fun making a Kumimo.